So what will we cover? Um, we're going to cover key differences, how to access the portfolio, how to complete your portfolio submission, um, how to be a star, editing and submitting your submission for approval, how to be membership ready and any Q&As at the end. So the key differences, so if you've previously used the old system, which was Calibrand, um, you were required to submit at least 10 write-ups for the skills and behaviour section, and then a workplace log of up to 400 days linking to an area of expertise. So this has now been brought together and your work experience will now be linked to your skills and behaviours entry, um, highlighting where possible an area of expertise. So effectively, this has reduced the portfolio element by quite a lot. Um, we are also using Forms and SharePoint. Um, so this means yourself and your line manager will no longer need to wait for login details or password resets. And your line manager will no longer need to register for a MySip for account as well. So previously, um, where you'd go in and highlight your line manager and your MySip for account, and then you both had to wait up to four weeks to receive portfolio login details. That's not the case anymore. Um, you can basically both start straight away. Also, for each submission, you will create a new form and you will continue to do this until you've reached the 400 days. And a new, um, another key difference is that evidence uploads are no longer required. Um, so in the previous system, you had to include a couple of pieces of evidence per submission. That's no longer required. You now do not need to include any evidence. However, our assessors do reserve the right to request this upon reviewing your portfolio submission. So how to access the portfolio. So you can do this by using a QR code or by the link. And once your first submission has been completed, you'll then receive a confirmation email, which will contain a link to your portfolio submissions in SharePoint. So then if you want to go in and have a look at what you've submitted, you can then use this link that you'll receive through email. We will be circulating the links early next week alongside um, the PowerPoint presentation and any further guidance. So how to complete your student portfolio submission. So you've clicked on the link or you've scanned the QR code and it will bring you to the form. The first part of this form is completing your information. So this includes your SIP for student number, your name and email address. It also asks if you would like your results emailed to your employer. So this is the overall results of your portfolio. So once you've um, sent your portfolio to be assessed, it's whether you've passed or failed. So um, that's the results that would get emailed to your employer. And you'll also need to agree to the declaration which states that this is all your own work. So you'll need to do this on each submission. Next is importing your employment details. So this includes your employer name, your job title, whether you work full or part time, a summary of roles and responsibilities of the role you're in when completing the activity and the start and end date of the when of when you worked on the activity. If, for example, you started working on an activity in January and finished this in May, but say you spent an overall of 30 days on this, you can go in and amend this in the SharePoint site to say, so for example, you've done it over a couple of months, but you've only done, say, 30 days on it, you can then amend this on the SharePoint site so it'll update your um, work log correctly. Also, go into the summary of roles and responsibilities. So by this, for example, if you are backdating a write-up, so you're writing something that happened in 2020, for example, then the summary of, summary of roles and responsibilities as of, of the role you were in in 2020. So you can backdate um, all your write-ups for up to 10 years, but your current line manager needs to be happy to sign it off. So this part will just need to include your line manager's details. So their name, job title, employer name and email address. And we ask that they use their work email address so they have the same email suffix as yourself. You'll also need to highlight whether they are an accountant. If you say yes, a second pop-up uh, pop box will appear, just asking for their accountancy body name. If you say no, you can just carry on with the form. OK, so this is the part now where you'll be completing your skills and behaviours as well as your workplace experience. So for each task you are writing about, you can choose as many skills and behaviours that it links to. You are then required to write about this using the STAR method, linking it to a technical competency. 
by the time you're ready to submit, you will have needed to have covered every skill and behaviour. However, there is no requirement to cover all of the technical competencies. We just ask that you cover as many as you can. If you have a 200 day exemption of work experience, so that's if you've completed the full AAT qualification and a full and current member of AAT still, you will show this by clicking the record of prior achievement portfolio box, which is just here on the screen. So different to the Calibran system, whereas previously you had to submit um, evidence per skill and per behaviour, you can now have your right up and tick as many as it includes. However, we do ask for a, a few submissions, maybe at least four or five submissions. So you don't just do one submission and tick all the skills and behaviours. We do need to see a variety in there. So how to be a star, and this is in regards to your write-up. So when writing up, we would like you to describe describe the context and background embedding your technical competency. What was the specific challenge or objective? What steps did you take to address it? And what was the outcome of your action? Now, when you're writing up um, using the STAR method, please don't feel like you have to write essays and essays. If you if what you're, if you can get your point across in a couple of sentences, then that is absolutely fine. There is no word count. And then some do's and don'ts. We say do create clear and full responses. Do ensure that you are writing I or my most of the time and not we are our or the organisation employer. Do ensure your application is all your own original work. Don't use acronyms, buzzwords or jargon and don't choose a non-finance example. So we say imagine the assessor as a well-informed reader, an experienced finance professional, but who has no knowledge of you, your role or your employer, its structure and ways of working. So if, for example, there's any company jargon, um, the assessors might not know what that means. So please be clear uh, when you're in your write-ups what you're, what you're saying. And things you need to know. So you cannot save and come back to a portfolio submission unless it's been submitted. So you can't complete a form halfway and then exit out of it and come back into it. You do have to complete the full form and submit it. However, we will be providing some um, templates of the form on, in Word format. So if you'd rather type it up in the Word format and then copy and paste it over once you've fully completed it, that is absolutely fine. When you submit the form, it does not automatically go to your line manager for approval. You'll need to follow the next steps, which we'll cover in the moment. And the portfolio submission form will automatically calculate the number of days in your SharePoint. However, this may need to be amended. So that was when I was touching upon where you might have done something covering a couple of months, but you've done 30 days. So you'd change, for example, the 60 days, you can amend that to the 30 days or whatever the correct amount of days are. You can also, when submitting it, don't feel that you have to do a day here and a day there. You can chunk the days. So, for example, you've done 50 days that could meet um, leadership, then that's absolutely fine. So submitting, editing and approving each entry of your student portfolio submission. Once you've submitted the form, so you've completed the form that we've just looked at, you've now submitted it, you'll receive an email like this. And this details your submission and includes a link at the bottom. So you'll need to click on this link to review and edit your submission as well as submitting it for review with your line manager. Because currently you've completed the form, but this still has not at this point gone to your line manager. So within the SharePoint site, once you've submitted your student portfolio submission form, you will then be able to edit your submission prior to submitting for approval from your line manager. To do this, you'll need to click the edit button at the top of your submission, and this will then allow you to edit your, res your responses. And we just ask, whilst reviewing and editing your submissions, please ensure that your portfolio submission days are correct for the time that you've worked on for the relevant task. So this is an example of what, what it will look like on SharePoint. This is just a partial part of the form. So as you can see, under PEP submission status, it just says draft. All that you'll need to do is click on that and click for submit for approval. And then that will get sent to your line manager. So your line manager then will receive an email like this and they will have the option to approve or reject it. So on the email, they'll have an overview of what you've written and they can literally just click approve or reject from the email that they receive. They don't have to log in anywhere or anything like that. They can do it directly from the email. Once they've approved or rejected it, they on your SharePoint, it will update like so. So for example, this just says it's been approved and then the date it was approved. Under it, you can see that says submit for approval. So that's just telling me that I've sent it to be approved to my line manager, but they've not done anything with that yet. 
So membership ready. So once you're ready to submit your portfolio, we ask that you check all of your submissions have been approved by your line manager and you have met the required number of work experience days. So you'll be able to see this in your SharePoint. So for example, I can see here, there's a couple that I've not submitted yet for approval to my line manager. One I have, um, which says submit for approval. They've just not done it yet. And then a couple have been approved by, line, by my line manager. So I just need to ensure before I um, purchase the portfolio submission, it's all approved and I've got the correct number of days, which for the majority will be 400 days. However, if you do have that AAT exemption, it's the 200 days. So once you're ready, you can then go onto the website and make payment for your portfolio. This will then notify our assessors that it's ready to review. If, for example, something needs added to your portfolio or you need to expand on further somewhere, then it will be a back and forth conversation with our assessors. Um, there'll be no repurchase in the portfolio. You'll just need, they might just add you, ask you to expand on a point. So you can do that provide it to them and then and just until it's right and can be accepted so that won't be a case of nope this is a fail go away and do it again that's not the case it will just be kind of you need to add x y and z to this you go and do that and then that's fine if you have already started working in the old Calibran system and you've inputted quite a lot of work what we'd suggest is you send us an email on membershipadmin at sipfa.org um, and we can look at the best way forward for you to go um, in terms of what left needs submitting.